Random <clears throat> oh, Excuse me Radio Special report This is part 3 Of the 77% Of black Kids are born Out of wedlock Jesus Christ We gotta do this in 4 parts This is just too long I do it in four parts now. All right, so this is part three, the continuation from yesterday and part one, which was last week. I say we jump into it. Let's do it. Many young black men, right, who are who have children out of wedlock and they have child support obligations, and you're trying to pay for your own rent or uh, or basic basic obligation levels for low income low income uh, dads. You know, it's it's still very, very, very difficult to, to make those contributions. We live in a society where black men are the most unemployed group in America. When America has an unemployment rate of 6 or 7%, black men have an unemployment rate of 18, 19, 20%. This is very true. Um, I think a lot of this goes back to the welfare reforms that were created in the 1960s, which told people, black families, that you can't have a man in the house. Uh, the men, men grew up not working, men grew up not seeing men working, so they started not working. Not working became the regular thing, selling drugs. Then you get hip-hop, which then promoted an agenda to African Americans that you could be the street guy. None of this was good for us, none of it. It was all bad for us, and we're feeling the effects today. I, I, even black exploitation films showed black people a fake image of what it, of what the pimp and 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 and, uh, and drug dealing lifestyle was like with Superfly and the Mac and Dolomite, and he even sexualized black women with movies like uh, Brown. What is it? With the movies, the movies with Pam Greer. Um, those movies over sexualized the black woman and then created, I believe, a new image of black people that they started buying into that they believe was their culture. Then working became um, synonymous with, you know, being better than. So I think that that became the issue with the black man. It's unfortunate. Here we are today. When unemployment is that high and, you know, your, your income level is shot, then it's very difficult for you to... However, I do still want to say that I think that it's a cultural thing. I don't think that the black man is unemployed because of any kind of racism that is out there. I think the black man is unemployed because many young blacks do not apply themselves. They do not try. They are concerned with the social, with how the society sees them versus, you know, getting their lives together. I think that's part of that alpha dynamic being a woman caring more about what others think versus taking care of you and yours. Provide for other people. So this man is going out and he's doing what he can to find work find opportunities to provide for his family and the world has rejected him and marginalized him and then he comes home and he's hearing daddy why can't we get this or, or why can't you buy us that let's not also forget that the majority of crime 50 percent of violent crime is done by african-american men so you have to tell yourself when those African-American men come home from jail, how many opportunities are in their neighborhoods for work? I know in Chicago there's tons. There's tons of opportunities here. I just don't think that many of them take advantage of them because they go home to mama. They go home to some woman who's going to take care of them. And then they go back to the block. Because essentially jail was just a little bit of a punishment for a little boy who was acting up. That's a lot of pressure, that's a lot of stress for a man to take. My name is Mayo Campbell, and I'm a father. I'm on my way to see my attorney, Kathy Middleton. I just generally have some questions about my rights as a father. There's a constant question among um, 
mothers and fathers as to how much child support is needed in order to adequately raise a child. When we look at the realistically child support, if it was really going to the child or to the support of the child, it should be put into a fund. And there should be a person, there should be people hired. Here's a job America could create. It should be a there should be a position where someone is the executive to that account. Their job is to act as like a personal banker on that account, on behalf of that child. State appointed, since the state wants to be involved. And what that or, or bank appointed, whatever. And what that person will do is monitor that that account, see to it that the that the desires of the woman to buy things go to the child. Not just give the money to the to the woman. Sometimes those women just, you know, they'll go get their nails done or get their hair did. Get a bunch of hair hats. And that child will never see that money. Hard money uh, uh, value, what it costs. We're looking at $241,000 plus. And that doesn't even include putting that child through college. Contrary to what most women would have you think. Most men don't have a problem with paying child support. Most men don't have a problem with supporting their child. They just have a problem with being unfairly forced to give more than they owe. Child support should be the support of your child. Child support is more comprehensive than just what you have in your pocket. Financial became um, the place that caused them the most stress about not being able to be an adequate entity in the life of their child, but it never started there. The child support agencies in many states, they still see themselves as collection agencies. The bottom line is the law says you owe your mother or child. The court acts for 17% of your income, so the father should have a minimum of 17% of the child's time. Honestly, I really think it should be 50% of the time. Well, realistically, yes, the court should do more to make sure that both parents are spending equal time with the child and with each other because the, the child will have a better relationship if he sees the parents having a better relationship, cohabiting, coexisting together uh, 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 in a positive manner. So the court should actually mandate that, make sure that, that they are also cohabiting uh, uh, or, or coexisting in a positive manner in front of that child. So, yes, I agree with that. Child support should be more. It should be forced. If, if it has to be forced, if money has to be forced, then also you being there. But, you know, in some of these situations, and Mayo Campbell may be a great dad, but in some of these situations, I'm sure Mayo knows this, there are some of those guys who are pieces of shite. We don't need those guys being with their kids. Those men are terrible. They have no place being with their kids. The guys who want to be gangbangers, want to be thugs, want to teach their kids how to shoot guns, want to teach their kids about drugs and gangbanging. Yeah, those guys, they don't need to be around their kids at all. Maybe that's when we get like a surrogate dad or something. Some, something like the, the government appoints a surrogate dad and he comes spends time with the kid, but he doesn't have to spend the money or something like that. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm just speaking, not a, just thinking off the top. But either way, there should really be, time should be added on to the time with child support. It shouldn't just be money. So we got the resources, but, uh, you know, I, it, it is what it is. The 50% of my time, not 17% of my income, that matters. But a lot of people put the emphasis, oh, well, you have to pay support. And they try to label these fathers as deadbeats. Naturally, a child needs their father. A boy needs his father because that's where he's going to get his identity from growing up as a young male. And a girl needs his father because that's where she's going to get her validation, her love, and her security from. And so either way you cut it, the child needs their father. I think I think the, the video could stop right here. So leave some messages in the comment section. We'll see you guys next week. I mean, this is really, this is really where the video should end. That's Mayo Campbell said it all. There's been a direct correlation people have been able to show is that for these lower income guys, the higher the, uh, the obligation is, the lower the odds that they're going to be able to pay. And, then, and the lower the odds that they pay, that then builds up arrears. Those arrears grow, they end up exiting. They end up going, going underground.
We have seen so many situations, in, even in celebrity culture, where celebrities are going through paternity situations of their own, child support issues. Uh, case in point, uh, the situation involving Terrell Owens, where he owes multiple women thousands and thousands of dollars. The message that celebrities like Lil Wayne is, it is sending when he has four children with four different women is, it doesn't matter who I'm with, doesn't matter where I make, you know, who I make babies with. Dwayne Wade, for instance. The reason I, I wrote the book, um, I think the title speaks for itself, you know, Father First, and really, um, I, I just wanted to share my experiences um, through my life and uh, what led me to the point in the position where nothing else matters, you know, more than, more than being a, a father. You know, he has a baby while he's on a break from Gabrielle Union. Another uh, celebrity that was in the news recently, Ludacris. Maybe I must have missed all that. Is that really what happened? He had a, he had a baby while on break with Gabrielle Union? Hmm. Another uh, celebrity that was in the news recently, Ludacris, that was having a an issue with his child support, and I think he was seeking a modification or reduction. It's about getting up every day in that house, showing how to respect a mother, showing how to live, showing work ethic, all of those things you teach on a daily basis. Well, I, I, I honestly think that these rappers are just exhibiting the culture. They are all a part of the culture. They are just doing what they have seen, what the culture has said you're supposed to do. They're just doing it. I mean, just because they're famous doesn't mean that they are exempt from being uh, fools. It doesn't mean that they can't go full retard on us. Never go full retard. So, I don't, I, don't, I don't know what you guys are thinking. I mean, just because they're celebrities, because they have money, what, they're supposed to be like at a different level of, of, of being able to not be susceptible to brainwashing and programming? I don't know who the hell these people say. I don't know who you think these people are. I think it's problematic when our young people see our celebrities um, father multiple children with multiple women. You're denying each and every one of them the best of you. Why? They're celebrities. They are not gods. They're just, they're human beings who make music. They became rich. They became famous. And that's, that's really it. I mean, what, uh, pfft, what's the big deal? because the best of you is a daily dose of you. Under federal law, if a father fails to, fails to pay child support, states do have the authority to um, uh, incarcerate fathers. And this is a huge problem oftentimes because we're dealing with fathers who are working. Yeah, this is a ridiculous thing. I, I don't like this at all. I think this is crazy because women can go and get child support for various different reasons. That man can be in that kid's life and then all of a sudden this woman just gets mad because he's about to get married to someone else who's dating another woman. This is nuts. And then if he can't pay it, because whatever, unfortunate circumstance, gets laid off, gets fired, whatever the case may be, after a while of not paying, you get to go to jail? What? See, that's just furthering, furthering the problem where the, where the kid doesn't have a father in his life. It's just, that's just nuts. And so if they're incarcerated, suddenly they become unemployed and unable to, to, to continue to work, which means that if they're not working because they're incarcerated, the child is not gonna get a dime of child support from this gentleman. By putting that man in jail, right, not only in the short term, but in the long term, right, we are not doing what's right for that man's child. Now they've been branded with um, the great letter J for jail. This is true. I do not have an argument. Now they have been branded. Now what are they supposed to do? It is necessary to wage a new all-out offensive. There are a lot of things that would not exist today had it not been when the war on drugs was started in 1971. Public enemy number one in the United States is drug abuse. Wait a minute. Don't you all start blaming. Don't you all start blaming the government. Don't you blame the war on drugs for for black men not being in, in these kids' lives. Don't you start doing this. Don't you, you, if you do this, you better start blaming choices. Every black man didn't do this. And the Sentence Reform Act in 86 by Ronald Reagan 
which increased the amount of incarceration in the black community, as well as the proliferation of drugs and crack in, into black America. Those, those two things. Uh-uh, 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 don't do this. Don't, don't you all tell this, this lie that has been purported by the African-American community about how it is because of the, this incarceration rate. If the blacks weren't selling the drugs, two other blacks, mind you, my, let, let's make sure we're clear on this. It's not like they started saying, I'm not going to sell it to my people. I'm going to go sell it to the whites. I mean, because of course, of course, I always hear this argument. The blacks knew that the whites were putting it into their community. My question is always the same. If the blacks knew that the whites were putting it into their community, why didn't they go sell it to the whites? So don't, don't tell me how this is because of this. All right, let's, let's, let's see. Things absolutely obliterated the black community. When we're looking at the war on drugs, we have to know that it was an um, inequitable war and a very prejudiced and racist war against young African Americans. Uh, the statistics show that African Americans use drugs less frequently than their counterparts, young white uh, males. That's fine that they may use them less. That's, that's fine. That's understandable. And that would then explain, sir, why there are less whites in jail for drug crimes. Because if the whites are using them and the blacks are selling them, well, um, those who sell go to jail. Those who use, they are abused. But however, African-American males disproportionately are arrested disproportionately go to jail no 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 what is going on here are we are we now just telling lies if the african americans are selling the drugs drugs are illegal drug offenses put you in jail what come on come on do you feel this way when you find out that meth is a drug, crystal meth is a drug that is being mostly pushed by the Amish and white people and that most of the offenses are white people and so they go to jail more times than blacks, almost, almost six times more times than blacks for meth because blacks don't even dabble in crystal meth that often. Do you feel like that's also disproportionate? Do you feel like that's illegal, that, that's not fair? Huh? So don't, I don't want to hear this about the crack epidemic when we don't share the same equity when it comes to crystal meth or other drugs, even crocodile. Desomorphine, a drug mostly unknown to the American public, but is just as deadly as heroin or meth. This drug originated in Russia as a substitute for heroin because it was unavailable and had a steep price. Although the high may be cheap, the effects are deadly. Crocodile is made from a pill called codeine and is mixed with other substances like gasoline and paint thinner. Crocodile rots the skin and kills people who take it within one to four years, depending on frequency of injection. Although this drug started in Russia, it is quickly making its way across the globe and has reached America. Crocodile is only $4 a hit compared to much more expensive drugs like heroin. The high usually lasts about an hour and a half though. This drug causes unbelievable damage to the body, with some of the effects being muscle destruction, bone damage, nervous system damage, inflammation of liver and kidneys, ulcers, and arms and legs that wither and die. Mostly Latinos are going to jail for that. Do you feel like there's some inequity there? <sighs> Disproportionately spent more time in jail. If you have laws that encourage things like uh, giving people 50-year prison sentences for possessing a gram of crack. No. Do you have priors? If you, it, not, yeah, not if you had a gram of crack and it's your first time. Let's n get out of here. That's, that doesn't even make sense. A gram of crack? One, your first offense, a gram of crack, you get 50 years? Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You're lying. Now you know that whatever you're talking about, Ray Ray or whoever, had two, three or four offenses, a gun charge, a theft charge, another drug charge, and this was the fourth one. Cut it out. And you don't take into account the fact that that person has three children at home. Oh, so, so should we not take into account that, that this person is giving these drugs to someone else who also may have three children at home? Huh? How about the life that is also being ruined by, the, by him selling the drugs? who are gonna grow up without a father, maybe become crack dealers themselves because the father's not around. May become crack users themselves. 
then you have played a role in the proliferation of fatherlessness. What we do oftentimes in putting fathers in jail is that we put them further behind the eight ball. He drops out of the child's life, both financially and physically. It's hard to be a father when you're in prison. You commit the crime, you're going to jail, you're going to do the time. Thank you, Jesse Lee Peterson. Finally, the voice of reason. I've never gone to jail in my life. My son has never gone to jail. When I was growing up in Alabama, I don't know of any of my friends or anyone who were in jail or ended up in jail when I was growing up because there was respect for self and respect for others. We didn't go around robbing, stealing, and killing. You know, we didn't do those things because we were raised by parents. White people commit crime too and they don't go to jail for the most part. And the reason they don't go because they work for themselves and they can afford a good attorney. The so-called black leadership and others. The reason that they blame it on the police officers or, or the jails are overcrowded, they call it racism. Once again, they want to keep black people angry. They want to keep them mad at the system in order to use them. I love it. I love it. Man, when you guys get a chance, make sure you guys check out some Jesse Lee Peterson. I'm giving him a shameless, a shameless plug. I love it. A lot of the black leaders of today are totally disconnected. I mean, if you marched with Malcolm X or Martin Luther King, the issues might be the same, but the methods are a lot different now. No, no uh-uh. The issues are not the same. You just want the issues to be the same. You would like for the issues to remain the same. They are not. We have a culture issue in black community. We have an issue with what we believe our culture is. We believe that our culture is a bunch of shameful things. That's the problem. Until we address that, let me tell you, we're never going to get rid of the issues that we have. And, you know, if you're like 60, 70 years old, what could you really understand in the needs of a 16-year-old in a digital society? Is, are they taking shots at Jesse Jackson? You're totally disconnected from their own personal experiences. Black leaders don't believe that the fatherless epidemic is the number one issue in the black community because there are so many other issues. And also because it's now become a third rail. So here's the thing, what's the diminishing return on bringing this up? One, I'm gonna piss everybody off, okay? And two, it really isn't something that people are all that concerned about. So if you take those two things together, as a leader, as a politician, this really isn't worth it for me to get involved in, is it? I mean, it really isn't because people aren't out in the street marching about this, okay? And then when I bring it up, I'm going to, I'm going to have to suffer the backlash of bringing it up. It's kind of a lose-lose. Well, I will say this. I will say this. What I do believe is the biggest problem in the African-American community is the culture that we believe about ourselves. The lies that we have been told are our history. The beliefs of things that have nothing to do with us. The idea that we are a group of people who can act a certain kind of way and that gives us validation because of the color of our skin and the fallacy and myth that we can are exempt from being racist. These are the biggest problems. Fatherlessness is a huge issue. I don't know if it's if it's primary or tertiary, I mean or or secondary. It's up there though. But these are all issues. There is a disservice if they're all not saying the same thing or all on the same page. And sometimes we see some infighting. See, I mean, look, let me just tell you something. Barack was, was put there for a reason. Jesse got a little bit jealous because he couldn't win, couldn't get the spot that he wanted. It is what it is, man. And I, 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 I am shame of this myself, but this is who you all, but, but let something happen tomorrow. And Jesse comes out and says, you know, hey, I'm for all this blackness. You all will be out there. You'll be out there supporting them, won't you? You'll forget all about this, won't you? You'll, you'll forget this happened and you'll say, well, you know what I mean? 
he was he was with Martin Luther King. The real crisis in the African American community is not so much that we have 72% of African American children born out of wedlock. 77% in 2019. But that we have a large number of African American children born to parents who are not committed to the process of raising their children. They are literally out of control because they have not been taught in the right way. They don't know how to discipline themselves because the parents are not doing it. The transience and fragility of black relationships, the very low marriage rates uh, in the black community create a, an unstable uh, situation, a very volatile situation for children. Wait a minute. That's not just in black families. That's in all American families this is happening. Even foreigners are being susceptible to the divorce rates because of the American influence. So no, no, no. This is not about blackness and this. This is about Americans. Something is wrong with the institution of marriage in America. And we know that children don't particularly thrive on that. When I look at shows like Jerry Springer and Maury Povich, and even my show, Divorce Court. So your complaint is... <laughs> <laughs> that this man cooked too often and too well and, and he made me gain weight. Mrs. Lucas, have you lost your mind? And I ask myself, what are women looking for, young ladies, and usually it's young ladies looking for when a mate. I think they're looking for all the wrong thing. You think, you really think, we live in a time where women care more about tattoos, beards, and hair. I, y y you think, you think, with 77% of the illegitimacy rate, you think they're looking for the wrong thing? The truth is, a lot of women try to change who they are, try to become what they think um, they want, uh, their man wants them to be, and ultimately they lose themselves. No, 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 that's not, that's, that's, that's not it. Women believe that they are in competition with men. You see, feminism has told women that you, you need to be, you are the man. So they are in competition with men. So this, this is not about, this is not about being what the man wants them to be. Oh, no, 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 no. They are being what they, what they believe is empowering. Because this is what you all have taught them. This, this is what feminism is. This is what being a black feminist is. This is what being a black woman is. Empowering yourselves, stripping on poles, having a bunch of kids. Hell, hoeing from time to time on the internet? Empowerment! They're more driven by that natural sexual desire and uh, are accepting less and less because the norms are telling them they're entitled to less and less. No, no, no. They're accepting less and less because they want less and less. The less and less that they can have, the more empowered they feel. If those women were to go after men who actually had things going for them, they would feel less about themselves because that man would be more established than them and they wouldn't want to like him. You know, he would be lame. You know, the guy who pays his bills, has a good job, works, you know, probably takes care of his kids. See, he's a lame. They don't want him. They want the guy who, when all the shit goes bad, they can clown him. They can clown him because he's nothing. Because this is a competition. Thank you, feminism. And I think being in our authentic selves, um, recognizing our power, our, our greatness, our passions, and, and living our dreams is the best attractor uh, that we can use to attract a mate. We have to have a standard for relationships, and if we can't meet that standard, we can be okay well, by ourselves. There it is. All right, this is part three. Tomorrow we will have part four. Yes, I'm going to do a little special one. Part four will be tomorrow. We will wrap this up and get to the point of things. I told some lies in this one. I wasn't happy with this one. Maybe part four will bring me back in. You guys leave some messages in the comment section. Yeah, you are listening to Random Radio.